This video demonstrates how to insert a dynamic number on your landing page so that you may use the uh, analytics uh, offer optimizer or advertiser optimizer so you know how many impressions you're getting per let's say keyword and then how many uh, calls you get how many impressions it takes to get each call so that you can figure out what's working uh, best for you to optimize your ad spend or maybe just track even uh, traffic sources and sub IDs from a from a uh, affiliate network or something now what we're going to use to automatically populate the numbers with tokens are the optimizer tokens so I'm just going to click on that link here and on the left hand side is what we're going to look for in the query string to populate what's here on the right hand side uh, in the tokens in track drive now you'll notice I can have this you know two different variables here and tell it to store them in the same sub thing this could be because you have a rigid ad network that can't send the left hand side of the equation to match what you want it to be so you can look for what they're sending and store it wherever you'd like um, very very common in what we've already defined for you s1 through s5 which are basically just tracking common variable names some people call them sub id1 sub id2 sub id3 i just call them tracking variables now if someone had to send in keyword and they they were too rigid to send in s1 you could actually add a nether uh, thing to search for put keyword here and then just tell it to store it in s1 so these are the tokens that automatically populate by track drive reading the url to get the information um, the second thing you're going to need to do is you're going to have to set up a number pool which i have done already and i have a whole nother video about setting up number pools so i'm not going to waste too much time here um, but if you did have number pools for both individual traffic sources and another number pool with no traffic source it would indeed allow you to have two number pools and it pulled the numbers properly based on whether we had a matching pool for a traffic source or we're just sharing a pool amongst all traffic sources okay the other thing you're going to need is a static number so I pulled a number for Google AdWords and I set a token the token here I'm going to track let's say ad group uh, in Google Analytics so for this number which isn't part of the pool it's a static number I have the system saying that the default number had to you be used because the pool was full I may even want to delete pre <clears throat> deletion prevention on that so it doesn't actually get deleted and my default number is no longer available on my landing page so that's how that functions now the in the offer itself at the top here you have the optimizer and that's going to have this is going to change here sorry at the time of the video this is actually offer token it says secret key right now but this is the the offer token that you're going to use on your source code now I've already developed some source code here for us and I can make this available to anyone who wants it just contact support at trackdrive.net and I'll get it to you but you'll see here that the default number throughout the page here is that number that I had pulled for Google AdWords and set s1 equal to the pool couldn't be used so we're basically losing tracking whenever your pool pool doesn't have enough numbers in it to show the visitors all of the pages um, what I've done here is I've 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 shown quite a few things uh, different examples like this is just a number showing and this one's hyperlinked and this one is going to return a different number because I've added some data tokens in I'm forcing those so track drive will try to automatically read the URL for the tokens you tell us to sniff out in the offer and the optimizer tokens but you can send anything you'd like um, hard-coded in the code as well this, these might be form fields that I got so this isn't actually a static you put in you know a, a field from your form um, it could also be tokens that don't even exist in track drive you can force it to say first name equals John because John was the name if we didn't have that token but you were forcing the data to come into the number pop uh, attribution uh, that would come on over now the order of priority is we will look at the URL first for the tokens that you want us to search for and then add or replace the ones we find here so if we were looking for s1 in the URL and we found it and then you were overriding it here with s1 you're gonna win the source codes gonna win over us trying to read things out of the URL so I've done examples here of unlinked numbers hyperlinked numbers uh, a number that's gonna come from a 
you know, with additional data. I hyperlinked some text here. I hyperlinked an image here, and I hyperlinked a button here. You know, button that's going to be made on the fly. Um, there's lots of things that uh, we have available um, for switches. I'd like to call them. We do have a GitHub that talks about these advanced features. One that I didn't work on on the example was that if you need a to show results from more than one offer in the source code here, I put down here the replace numbers script. So the things that are required are you're going to place in your header this exactly every single time. This uh, JS source code is on CDN so it's, it's pretty fast and will always get updated. Uh, if you ever have things not functioning right, it could be that you need to hard refresh your browser to get the latest version. Um, so that's no problem, but obviously consumers would always see the latest version. But you need this line of code here, which is going to be our JavaScript included. You need this section down here, which is going to tell the system to replace all, or tell, tell your page to replace all the numbers. This token ID here is what I showed you in the optimizer part of the offer. And then the default number that I'm showing here is just based on the traffic source. Now many people will read from the URL and set the default number based on pulling it out of the uh, out of the query string so that you're not hard coding the default number you're actually telling uh, your landing page to use the default number that's coming at you so that you can you know give a different link to different uh, traffic sources where they send in their default number to your landing page um, so that's that um, and the results on this I've already done this here you'll see here that I'm sending in A equals 1000 which is the traffic source ID for Google AdWords in my system now I was looking for A equals or traffic source ID equals I my personally don't like to send such a long variable in there and it's something that might get filtered over time uh, so A equals they're not going to filter and then I have S1 equals test HTML for today's date I left S2 blank here just for this demo and then I'm all the G click ID is also coming over and that always happens automatically from Google uh, AdWords. Now since I'm not looking for the G-Click ID and my source code is not trying to force it in, you'll see that the 0611 number and this one I forced in some additional tokens so it got a different number. Um, that's going to happen. Now again we do have this data offer token. If I needed to uh, pull numbers from a different offer, a great example is I have a mortgage form that they fill out the form and on the thank you page I have paper call offers for get your credit score and get a home warranty and get home insurance three different offers I need to show numbers from a different offer so in the individual call I can override the data dash offer token and force a token in there to force it from a different offer than what this offer is so I didn't demo that here but that is available to you in, in something that can happen but most of the time the one offer is going to show numbers throughout the screen and so when I go look at our numbers here I've already filtered this to only show numbers from the ring pool so that's easier to see so when I mouse over the things you can see the number that had 0611 it just has the traffic sources Google AdWords and the only token it has was test HTML today's date and the second number that showed was the one I forced in some token values. So you see there that it has the debt amount over 10K and the payment status is late and also has that same S1 variable. Now what happens to the Google Click ID? Because you don't want to have a million numbers trying to track something that's unique like a Click ID, Track Drive will keep track of an impressions table so you'll we'll have that we saw a equal this and s1 equal this and g click id equal this and we'll build that table up when we try to interface back through outgoing webhooks or from our our integrations like to google adwords if we don't see on the call the field we need as a token to do the post back we'll then refer to the table the impressions table and based on matching up the A value and the S1 value or whatever you told us to track, we'll go find a valid click ID that can be used to update Google Analytics. Now since you're only trying to track those certain things, 
we're going to give them a really good click ID that makes sense. And so we'll then delete the click ID or the row of the table that we used out of the table so that unique click ID isn't going to be used again to try to update Google AdWords. Um, so that's how you have very few numbers used in track drive uh, while you're trying to actually track a click ID because we'll keep track of an impressions table. Now I'm going to go ahead and just change this here to add in rich test 2018 0414A. I'm going to press enter there. And so we get our numbers back here and we go look at our uh, numbers. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. And you'll see here now the numbers, uh, because they expired, it didn't grab more numbers from the pool, that now I have the number that didn't have additional tokens also now has the S2 value. And the same thing for this number here. Um, so as you, as you can see, what happens is based on what we're looking for automatically from your configuration of the offer, all that information is going to be populated in the numbers. When someone calls this number, we know what traffic source it came from. We know what offer it belongs to so that we can route to the buyers that are on the offer. And then all these additional tokens will also become tokens on the call itself. And that's where we know how many calls were created by S1 equals this and S2 equals this. Now in track drive alone, even though we might be posting back a Google click ID to Google to tell them exactly what converted and all the information they keep with that click ID, you were only interested really in that it was Google and that S1 was this ad group, for example. So under our analytics on the advertising optimizer is where you'll be able to see, I can open up the token as well. And so I'm going to tell it to look for S1. Okay, so now this is going to tell me how many impressions I've had in the date ranges today. Um, so how many impressions I, uh, I requested and how many actually displayed. Now I had my number pool configured wrong earlier, so it could not show. I Sorry, I had a bug in the code. It couldn't show one of the numbers because it couldn't tell what I was trying to do. Um, so it really, normally, this is going to be how many times you requested that value and how many times it actually showed. This number here is typically when did the default number show. So if you don't see 100% of your impression showing, it means your number pool is too small and we, we couldn't show a pool number from the pool, so we had to show the default number and that's why you'll have less impressions here. But you'd be able to see average talk time and things like that, but the most important thing is how many impressions per call it's taking for you to get calls. So as you send more and more S1 values in this situation, let's say in its ad group, you'll be able to um, see all that stuff. Now if you did track a second variable, let's say you're working on uh, good good ideas like redirect.com. When you first start optimizing, you're going to send in S1 equals their source. Once you figure out which sources are working, you could then also add in S2 equals subsource and figure out within the sources that you figured out are good to buy from, is there any subsources that are really the gold? And so I can then drill down even further to S2. And it, I don't know, it didn't show the impressions here. I think our uh, impressions thing updates every five minutes because there can be heavy, heavy, heavy volume. So we cache that. So during, I just did this, so it's not there yet, but that will show. Um, but that's where you can drill down to see the sub IDs that are actually working after the data can populate. So while we're track, why Google, you're sending back the click ID and have much more detail about what all happened with that click ID. On track drive, you'll be able to get a summary of what's going on with your uh, things that you were actually looking at, keywords, ad groups, whatever, but you don't have to go all the way down to click ID because tracking a click ID in track drive wouldn't make much sense on the optimizer because we wouldn't know what that click ID does for you. And that is how you implement the dynamic number insertion and how the uh, advertising optimizer works with that data uh, on the track drive version 2.